Chapter 40, Dynamite. One evening in early May, I finished my homework and came into the kitchen to find my parents sitting at the table with a man I didn't recognize. He wore a suit and hat, and it wasn't until I saw his stamp that I realized he was a notary, and I remember that mother and daddy, as teachers, were both state employees. Act 10, I asked, once the man had left. Mother nodded. Daddy's face was pinched and pale. Did you list them all? I asked. Yes, said Daddy. Even the Arkansas Council of Human Relations? Of course, I'm a member. Daddy got up and left the room. Mother and I looked at each other. Will he lose his job? I asked. I hope not, said Mother. Then she went to the sink and started washing the dishes from dinner. The next day was Tuesday, and I was meeting with Liz at the Rock Crusher. She wasn't there when I arrived. I waited a while, then put my satchel on my big rock and started to climb the oak tree. It wasn't as scary this time. If I concentrated and held on real tight, I could almost do it without counting. Almost. I was halfway up when I heard a voice call out, Hey, Marley! I was so surprised I nearly fell out of the tree. I looked up. There was Liz looking down at me. Sorry, she said. I didn't mean to startle you. I didn't know you were there. You climbed up without me this time. Yeah, I guess I did. Liz grinned at me. You're in a good mood, I said, pulling myself up to the branch she was sitting on. Yeah, Liz said. Curtis asked me to the baseball game this weekend. We had a great time. Shirley was there too, and she just about fell off the bleachers when she saw I was there with a ninth grader. Wow, I said. But the truth was, I was worried. If things were going so much better for Liz, how much longer would she need me? Bring anything to eat? Liz asked. I got some apples, I said, but I left my satchel on the rocks. Never mind, Liz said. No, I'll go get them. I started to climb down. It was a long way. I was just jumping down from the lowest branch when I heard something, like someone biting into an apple. Hello, little mute girl. Red and JT were sitting on the stone table. My satchel was open and they were eating my apples. I was glad I was on the ground because I suddenly felt so weak I didn't think I'd have been able to hold on to the branches. We followed you, said JT. I wasn't sure if they knew Liz was here or not. She was a long way up. I wasn't sure if she could hear us, but I had to warn her not to come down. Why, JT in red? I said as long as, as loud as I could without yelling. What a surprise to see you here. Where is your friend? Red asked. I came here by myself. Why were you up in the tree? JT asked. I was looking at the view, I said. Red went over to the tree and looked up. My heart started beating furiously, but the branches were thick with spring growth. Sure there's not someone else up there? I think I would have seen them if there were. I held my breath and willed Liz to be silent. I recited the times tables myself until finally Red looked away from the tree and and turned his piercing blue eyes on me. I heard you stop doing my brother's homework, Red said. JT was eating my apple intently without looking up. Suddenly, I wasn't scared. I was angry, too. You going to beat me up, Red? You going to beat up a girl? I asked. Red didn't answer. Anything in the bag? He asked JT finally. JT rummaged inside. Two dollars. He handed the money to his brother. Something fell out of the tree. We all turned and looked. An acorn, then another one, and the sound of something or someone coming down the branches. No, no, Liz, stay in the tree. I have it under control. I don't care if they steal what's left of my birthday. What was that? Red asked. I shrugged, my heart beating so hard I could. Sh- I was sure they could see it through my sweater. JT and Red walked over to the tree and looked up. You see anything? asked Red. Nothing, said JT. I'm going to climb up and make sure. At that moment, two more acorns fell. Red grabbed a branch, about to swing himself up when a squirrel jumped down, spooked, and jumped on Red's head. Ah! Red screamed. Get it off of me! He fell to the ground. JT was laughing too hard to do anything. It's just a squirrel, I said. I went over and picked up my satchel. I'm leaving. You two can stay and play with the rodents if you want. I turned and started walking, praying they would follow me. After a moment, they did. I know you're a race mixer said Rez. We'll catch you at it one of these days. I didn't say a word. I guess it made him mad that I didn't respond because he grabbed the satchel from my shoulder and tossed it into the forest. I took reciting all 25 prime numbers under 100, but I didn't get angry. I didn't say a word. 
I just left the path and went to get my bag. It had fallen into a little ditch full of weeds and tree roots and ferns. On the way back to the path, I tripped over a rock and fell down. Ow! JT came over to me. You all right, Marley? Why do you care? I asked. But he held out his hand to help me, and I took it. That's when we realized it wasn't a rock I had tripped over. It was a box, an old box, labeled dynamite. Wow, said JT. Red, come look at this. Red crashed through the underbush, his boots much better suited for tramping through the weeds than my saddle shoes. Dynamite, he breathed. Holy moly, JT, your girl's good luck after all. Red reached to take the lid off the box. Don't touch it, I screamed. Do you want to kill all of us? Don't you know anything? Dynamite's stable. It won't go off unless there's a charge of some sort. Besides, you tripped over it. If anyone was likely to kill us, it was you. I stood there and watched as he pulled the lid off. There was a whole layer layer of dynamite inside. Nine or ten sticks. He whistled. Must have been here since this place was a working quarry. Tonight, we'll have some fun for sure. What are you saying? I'm saying, said Red, we'll find your little friend and show her whole family what we think of who tried to pass. Red, said JT. Daddy's right, said Red. You are a little coward. JT said nothing. Give me your bag, said Red. I didn't move. I said, give me your bag. I just stared at him. Red came over and grabbed it off my shoulder. What are you doing? I yelled. We, said Red, are taking the dynamite home. He started placing the sticks of dynamite in my satchel. JT, he barked. You gonna help me or not? JT glanced at me, then at his brother. He started placing the dynamite in the bag. I turned and walked off slowly at first. I figured if I ran, I'd be tempted I'd be tempting them to follow like dogs after a fox. Also my knee hurt and my tights were ripped. I'd have to tell mother I lost my school satchel. And we'd have to buy a new one. I didn't dare go back to find out if Liz was still in the tree. Hopefully she snuck down and had already made it out another way. I stumbled home, unsure what to do. I'd have to tell my father about the dynamite. I'd have to warn Liz. We thought we were safe at the rock crusher because it was so isolated, but clearly we were wrong. When I got home, Betty Jean was waiting for me in the kitchen. She looked me over, from the twigs in my hair to my ripped skirt to my bloody knee. Finally, she waved a piece of paper in the air. I have a message for, for you, she said, then handed me the paper. From your friend Lisa. I took the paper and it read, I'm home and I'm fine. Call me. Thank you, Betty Jean. That was one thing off my chest. Liz was okay. I give her a quick call and jump in the shower and... Then I noticed Betty Jean was still looking at me. Her arms crossed, a frown on her face, and I started to think I wasn't going to get that shower. I don't think I've ever met your friend Lisa, have I? No, I said quietly. I don't think so. Funny thing is, said Betty Jean, her voice sounded awful familiar. I couldn't figure out who it reminded me at first, but then it came to me. Elizabeth Fullerton. She's in youth group with Curtis. Nice girl. Pretty. Sometimes goes by the name of Liz. Oh no. She knew. There was a glass of iced tea and a piece of pecan pie on the kitchen table. Now sit, Marley, and start talking. So there you have it. Red is now planning to go bomb Liz's house. We'll see what happens.